Stan Gibalisco here, a viewer of my channel and a reader of my book Teach Yourself Electricity and Electronics, 6th edition, has requested that I describe the functions of the individual components in some of the circuit diagrams that appear in chapter 26, the chapter on amplifiers and oscillators. What you're looking at right now is figure 26-20 from page 455 of Teach Yourself Electricity and Electronics, edition number 6. You will find this circuit in almost every edition of Teach Yourself Electricity and Electronics, although the figure number and chapter may differ. But this particular amplifier uh, pardon me, this particular oscillator circuit consists of two amplifiers, one after the other, each of which inverts the phase, and then the output is fed back to the input, so that when you invert the phase and then invert it again, you're coming back to the input in phase, and you end up getting oscillation. And you can control the frequency at which that oscillation occurs, by means of an inductance capacitance tank circuit. I don't, I'm not sure why they call this a tank circuit, uh, but that's kind of an old school term. This inductor has a powdered iron core, as you can tell, uh, by the dashed lines, and uh, the capacitor is in parallel with it. Uh, what happens here, this, these are n-channel junction field effect transistors. The source, the gate, and the drain. The source, the gate, and the gr drain. These are class A uh, grounded source amplifiers. Just about the most conventional type of amplifier that you can find. And this type of oscillator will work over a wide range of frequencies all the way from audio uh, up through radio frequency or RF. Um, figure 26-20 in the accompanying text describe an audio amplifier in which case this inductor right here would probably be a pot core inductor to have a, a several Henry's of inductance making it possible to use a variable capacitor for uh, C, in which case you could have a variable frequency audio oscillator. But you could just as well do it at RF and have a permeability tuned um, uh, powdered iron core solenoidal inductor or a toroidal core inductor and a variable capacitor. Uh, that uh, should make clear the functions of L, the inductor, and C, the capacitor, which determine the frequency of oscillation according to the formula uh, which you should by now almost know by heart. I do, but, but I, I can't conveniently write it on the screen here. Uh, you'll find it in the book, though, <laughs> if you look. So that's your assignment for today, is to look through the book and find it. <laughs> but the functions of these components, this resistor right here provides the bias for the gate of this transistor, and this resistor provides the bias for the gate of this transistor to keep them in class A, meaning that the signal flows for the entire input cycle through from the source to the drain. So you get, suppose you start out with a little bit of static or some sort of disturbance right here. It gets amplified. It goes to this blocking capacitor to the gate of the second field effect transistor and it is then amplified again or it is amplified by this circuit. It goes back through this blocking capacitor and this blocking capacitor full circle to the gate of the first transistor. Uh, because this stage inverts the phase of the signal and this stage inverts it again, 180 degree phase shift, 180 degree phase shift, it comes back in 
phase. The uh, input to this transistor to the gate comes back in phase with the uh, with itself, with its original self. And 180 degrees out of phase with this one right here. So uh, that is basically what the purpose of these capacitors is, is to simply provide the feedback path. This provides the resonant frequency because when it's tuned to the resonant frequency it offers a high impedance to ground making it difficult for the signal to reach ground from the circuit but at any other frequency it offers a low impedance more or less shorting out the feedback path point right here and preventing or discouraging strongly oscillation at all of those frequencies. So only at one frequency is oscillation not discouraged and that's how you get oscillation at a single frequency um, because it it hates all the frequencies except one and the one that it doesn't hate is the one that you get. This resistor right here provides bias for the drain of this transistor and this resistor right here provides the voltage for proper operation of the drain of this tran uh, field effect transistor. These could just as well be p-channel uh, field effect transistors in which case you would reverse the polarity of the power supply or they could be NPN or PNP bipolar transistors in which case you'd need an extra resistor between the base and the uh, ground in order to get your um, you need an extra resistor between the base and the power supply between the base and the power supply in order to provide class A operation but I decided amongst the four choices available to me here to use n-channel junction field effect transistors and just so that I get it straight in my head and you get it straight in your head these electrodes are the sources, these are the gates where the arrow is, and the top one here is the drain. These are grounded source circuits. And then you take the output. You can actually take it from either one. This, uh, you can take it from here or you can take it from here. But I take it from the second stage in this example because it makes the diagram look simpler. This blocking capacitor should have a large enough value to pass signal and if you want to use audio frequencies that means it's going to have to be uh, quite a large capacitor indeed. More than likely uh, either a tantalum capacitor or a an electrolytic capacitor in which case you would have to have the positive side of the electrolytic here and make sure that that was more positive than this side. But that's the the function basically of each one of these components in figure 26-20 on page 455 of the sixth edition of my book co-authored with Simon Monk. Teach Yourself Electricity and Electronics, sixth edition at a bricks and mortar bookstore within 10 light years of you or via amazon.com a link to which I provide in my website. Well actually I provide a link to all of my books and from there uh, it's the Amazon link so uh, I'm giving Amazon a little plug there. It's a good way to get books but I recommend again uh, as I lest I forget that you should get the paper bound copy of any book that has complicated mathematics and or diagrams and or tables in it as this one does because electronic versions of books such as you might find on the Kindle um, I've found it but particularly on any electronic rendition of a book strange errors will creep into diagrams and sometimes tables appear illegible for reasons which you will eventually learn from 
bitter experience if you decide to go against my advice and purchase an electronic version of the book. I don't want to damage electronic sales but uh, of these outlets, but uh, at this point they have some work to do before they have perfected electronic versions of books. For me, I don't understand why they just don't do a PDF of the whole book and be done with it. Just take the hard copy, do a PDF of it, and be done with it. But, but buy the paper-bound book. That way, when you get angry at your laboratory mate in your science class or electronics class or, or angry at yourself, it's heavy enough so that if you clobber a human being over the head with it, it will knock them out. Uh, I don't recommend that either, by the way. Unless you're really, really mad. Stan Jubilisco, signing off for now. Until next time, so long.